delta modulation so it's a special case of uh, differential pulse code modulation uh, to get some intuition let us look into this audio waveform right so over here uh, the blue curve is basically representing an audio signal and the stars in it are identifying the sample positions that are taken uh, based on uh, the sampling rate right so for instance the sampling uh, time between this sample and this sample is simply ts so in pulse code modulation we are encoding all of these samples but in the previous session we have mentioned that pcm is not very bandwidth efficient so we move towards differential pulse code modulation and we said that because the samples are very correlated they are very very similar uh, at successive uh, instant of times so we can take the difference of these samples and then we can quantize that difference and that is going to give us a result in which we will have less number of quantization levels and moreover we can improve the snr so presently the delta modulation is simply a special case of dpcm so by special case what we mean is that the number of bits that we assign for the quantizer is simply one in delta modulation whereas the n can have any value in our dpcm uh, system so if n is equal to 1 this means that the number of quantization levels which is equal to 2 power n so if n is equal to 1 so we would have two levels so this is a considerable simplification of our model from uh, dpcm to delta modulation now an important consideration that we need to take into account is that the sampling frequency needs to be much higher than the nyquist rate so it should be approaching four times so the reason for that is so over here as i mentioned that this is our sampling time right so for delta modulation uh, we only have two quantization levels right so say 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 so anything above this value would be approximated to 0 0.5 and anything uh, below 0 would be approximated to minus 0 0.5 so since there are only two levels so it would be much better if the correlation is higher so by that what i mean is that if we make the sampling time period ts very small and hence we can make use of one bit quantizer that is the delta modulation so in short uh, delta modulation is nothing but one bit differential pulse code modulation now there are several advantages of uh, delta modulation starting with the simplification of our model since we are using n equal to one so we we have a very small number of quantization levels right so we have simple design and construction for uh, delta modulation as compared to the dpcm right so next major advantage is that we don't need frame synchronization uh, that we previously needed for dpcm or for the pcm and for the frame synchronization what we mean is that we need to take into account uh, the most significant bit and the least significant bit uh, so that we do not lose uh, the frame at the transmitter and uh, the receiver because uh, if we do so it would be disastrous so for our delta modulation we don't need frame synchronization and the most important consideration is that we need fewer number of bits for encoding a given message and this is the most important aspect because if we have fewer number of bits that means in time domain we are sending less number of uh, samples and in the frequency domain we are bandwidth efficient so all is not rosy for delta modulation uh, there are some challenges as well for example the step size of a comparator so as mentioned that we only have two levels uh, based on which the quantizer needs to decide an input so it, it should it should either put it to 0 0.5 value or minus 0 0.5 value right so let us look into some of the challenges and uh, methodology of delta modulation in terms of transmitter and receiver right so over here we have the transmitter block for delta modulation uh, x of t defines our input and it is fed to a summation block right and then we have g of t that is the output of that summation block and over here this is uh, the most important uh, block in our delta modulation this is simply a comparator as mentioned over here in this uh, example so after the comparator we have g q of t and then that is passed through a sampler and the output of sampler is simply gq of k now this is a discrete time signal this signal is feedback to an accumulator which is simply an integrator so it is so it is going to sum or integrate all of these values uh, over here and the output of that integrator is simply xq hat of t 
and this is fed back to the summation and then over here we have again g of t at the output of our summation now let us understand this further by means of this plot this is our signal x of t which is input analog signal and then we have a zigzag pattern and this pattern is basically our accumulator output which should be over here right so this is x hat q of t so the accumulator is triggered based on this comparator for example if we have 0.5 and minus 0.5 as a threshold so if the input signal which is identified over here is high so this is a big value as compared to the accumulator signal which is over here which is a small value so big value minus small value is always going to be positive above this line so if it is positive it will be approximated to 0.5 right addition of 0.5 right and then that would be passed on and then feed uh, fed back so if the slope is quite high so there will be an incremental increase of 0.5 in the amplitude as we move on and if the input signal stabilizes so if this is cons constant the output of the accumulator is going to toggle on the successive sample values right uh, this toggling effect is basically due to our uh, two levels of quantizer so if we reduce 0.5 say if we set it to 0.5 so this toggling will be quite small right but if we increase it the toggling will become quite big, big. but we need to be very uh, careful in designing uh, the amplitude of uh, two level comparator because if you make it too small you would even have a worse result as compared to this but if you increase it considerably say from 0.5 to uh, 1 so you are going to follow this curve so we are going to uh, get rid of slope overload noise this one but the toggling will be quite high so the toggling will be high but we will be able to capture the slope right so there are two types of uh, noises which are induced over here the first one is called the granular noise so it is just because of the toggling and then we have the slope overload noise so this slope overload noise is because of the step size so as uh, in the case of most of the communication systems so we have our trade off so if you pull this down this would increase which is not desirable but we can break this seesaw into this by inducing an adoptive step size so over here it will become small and over here the step size will be higher and for this we would need some kind of a control mechanism to adjust the amplitudes of this comparator now this waveform is represented over here so you can observe that if the accumulator output is going downward right so we would have minus vc uh, minus vc where this minus vc is simply uh, minus 0 0.05 uh, previously mentioned right so symbolically this is minus vc so if the accumulator is going down we have minus vc if it is toggling so we would have plus vc then minus vc plus vc and so on so over here you can observe that it is consistently increasing so you would have plus vc and then minus plus minus and so on so b is our delta modulation waveform so from the input x of t we have got this delta modulation waveform at the output so this concludes the transmitter part of our delta modulator now moving on say this is passed through a channel and then we have a receiver the receiver for delta modulator is quite easy so we will we will take this uh, signal which is delta modulation waveform and we would use the same accumulator over here at the receiver side and hence if we use the same accumulator if this is the input and we use an accumulator so we, we are going to get this signal and this is appearing over here x hat q of t so this x hat q of t is represented by means of this accumulator curve and you can see it has a low frequency and then because of these uh, ripples there is also a high frequency in it so in order to reduce or in, in order to remove these high frequency contents these ripples or these zigzag uh, behaviors uh, we use a low pass filter and if we use the low pass filter we would be left with only a low frequency content and that content hopefully would be very similar to our input signal so this is an end to end discussion about delta modulation